I remember hearing about this story a while ago, and upon hearing the headline, it almost sounded too crazy to be true, so I just assumed it was some kind of clickbait, and how wrong I was. On the 26th of May 2012, the police received a call from a cyclist named Larry Vega. Larry had just witnessed a naked man growling and eating another man's face. On this day, a 31-year-old man from Miami named Rudy Eugene was making his way back from a music festival called Urban Beach Week in Miami. He had abruptly left his girlfriend's house at 5.30 a.m. His girlfriend would later say, he was behaving strangely. He rummaged around for his clothes, grabbed his Bible, and told her he was going to Miami Beach. He gave her a kiss goodbye, told her he loved her, and left. Rudy had a rather extensive criminal record. At just the age of 16, he had already been arrested eight times. Back in 2004, Rudy had broken several items in his mother's house, pushed her around and made threats against her. His mother began to fear for her life, so she called the police and told them what Rudy had said. He had said to his own mother, I'll put a gun to your head and kill you. When the police came and confronted Rudy, he balled his hands into a fist and threatened several police officers. It took three taser shots to subdue him. Now let's go back to the 26th of May 2016. Rudy's car had broken down before reaching the festival. He had called his girlfriend and told her what had happened and explained he would be late home. He stayed with his car for around an hour before leaving and walking three kilometers along the MacArthur Causeway to the mainland. As he was walking along the street, several people reported a person swinging from lampposts and taking their clothes off. At around 2 p.m., Rudy had stripped completely naked and was tearing up the Bible and throwing the pages on the ground. At this time, he walked by the Miami Herald building and began speaking to an elderly homeless man named Ronald Popper. Ronald was a 65-year-old man who had been homeless since 1976. He was just sitting in the shade of the overpass. What happened next was partially captured on CCTV, but the footage isn't clear and the camera was far away. Rudy staggers up the street and approaches Ronald, and Rudy starts to accuse him of stealing his Bible. Rudy then began to attack in a frenzy that would shock the world. He lunged at Ronald and began to furiously punch him. He beat him for around two and a half minutes before throwing him from the sidewalk. The 65 year old man was completely overpowered. Rudy continues to mercilessly beat Ronald for a further five minutes. He then drags him along the sidewalk, ripping off his trousers as he does. All while this is happening, multiple cars and bikes slow down and observe Ronald screaming for help, and they just pass by. Now out of view of the camera, Rudy begins to choke Ronald and pushes his fingers into his eyes and gouges his eyeballs from his sockets. He then begins to sink his teeth into his face and tears chunks of flesh from his skull. The whole disturbing incident occurred for a shocking 18 minutes before a police car is seen approaching. Thankfully, some of the people who had seen the attack had called the police. An officer named Jose Ramirez emerges from the car, unaware of just how dire the situation was. He does a double take at the bloody scene and draws his gun. He screams at Rudy, demanding that he stops at once. Rudy just looks up at the officer with a crazed look in his eye, flesh and blood dripping from his mouth. He then lets out a growl towards the officer and goes back to gnawing at the face of the poor defenseless man. With no other choice, Ramirez fires a bullet into Rudy's body. Remarkably, this gunshot proves to be ineffective. Rudy just continues to rip the flesh from Donald's face. He then fires his weapon another four times. A total of five bullets was enough to stop the crazed cannibal. 
Paramedics eventually arrive and Ronald, who is still alive and conscious, is taken to hospital. Rudy was pronounced dead. When Ronald arrived at the hospital, he was in critical condition, with 80% of his face above the beard line missing. He had lost his eyebrows, his nose, parts of his forehead and cheek, and his left eye had been ripped out. The damage to his right eye had been too severe, and he was now completely blind. Doctors covered up the right eye with a flap of skin taken from his scalp and forehead. In just seven weeks, charitable donations had flooded in to help Ronald. Over $100,000 was raised. In the following months, he went through various facial reconstructive surgery. A year following the attack, he gained more than 50 pounds in much needed weight and received help from an occupational therapist who taught him how to dress himself, shave, shower and feed himself. He was also gifted a guitar to keep him busy. There are pictures online of the injuries just after the attack had taken place. I can't show them here on YouTube for obvious reasons, but they are just a Google search away. When asked about the incident, Ronald gave a chilling account of what happened. He said, For a very short moment of time, I thought he was a good guy, but he just went and turned berserk. He said to me, You and me, buddy, no one else here. I'm going to kill you. He then just started to scream. Ronald then went on to say, He smashed my face into the sidewalk and then strangled me in wrestling holds. At the same time, he plucked my eyes out. I just didn't know how to get away from the guy. He just ripped me into ribbons. He chewed up my face and plucked out my eyes. That's basically all there is to say about it. I thank the Miami Police Department for saving my life. If they didn't get there in the nick of time, I would have definitely been in worse shape, possibly dead on the scene. Ronald has also recorded a video that can be found on YouTube where he thanks the community for all of their support. From what I can gather about Ronald's early life is that he was a rather intelligent young man when he finished high school. There isn't a great deal of information about how he actually ended up living on the streets. He was already homeless in 1976. He was shot and treated for a gunshot wound, and when asked for his address at the hospital, he put down the Salvation Army shelter. He also has a record of arrests for trespassing, public intoxication, and sleeping in public. He slept on a cardboard box just across the street from where the attack had taken place. He would often listen to a small radio and never troubled anyone. Ronald doesn't like to speak about the attack, so information about how he is these days is hard to find. Whenever journalists would speak to him, he would often shut it down quickly by saying he was tired. Now I guess you're wondering what could possibly motivate someone to do this. According to the people that knew Rudy, they said he was just an average guy, a little quiet and private but nothing that indicated he was capable of doing anything as barbaric as this. None of his friends or family noticed any change in terms of his mental health. Despite them saying this, he was actually known to be violent at times. A powerful synthetic drug, commonly known as bath salts, was thought to be the culprit fueling this frenzy. But strangely, toxicology reports showed that Rudy only had marijuana in his system. It should be known that there are some synthetic drugs that are undetectable. The autopsy uncovered some rather strange things. They found several unidentified, undigested pills in his system, but they did not find any human flesh. Following the death of Rudy, his mother struggled to find any church that would be willing to hold his funeral, as he was now known as the Miami Cannibal. Whenever they found out about how he died, they would cancel the ceremony. After being turned down multiple times, Rudy's funeral was held in a funeral home. Those that knew Rudy claim that what happened just doesn't line up with who he was. 
some claim that he must have been spiked by a drug that didn't show up in his system. His friends have said that he would only ever smoke marijuana. He would never take pills, not even from a chemist. Some believe he had a mental breakdown, and Rudy's mother believes that what happened that day had to be supernatural. 